Hi, it's Simon here from Analog Anorak and to start the new year I'm going to feature one of my favourite early Decca releases and it's this beauty here. It's Campoli's Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto. The orchestra involved is the London Symphony Orchestra conducted by Atalfo Argenta and I want to tell you today really why I love this recording and some of the possible reasons why it's it's such a classic. It's definitely Campbell's Christmas Cracker as it was recorded in a session on the 27th and 28th of December 1956 in a grubby cold Kingsway Hall and for various reasons the stars all aligned for this period and some great recordings were made, including Espana and the, and the Catchin Liszt Piano Concerto as well. But I want to focus in on my favorite, the first of this trilogy. I've been lucky enough to end up with two copies of the mono original release. Unfortunately, I haven't won the lottery yet, so, the, so getting hold of an original SXL stereo is certainly out of my uh, out of my grasp but recently I did have a punt on getting hold of a copy of the 1970s repressing that was on the Decca SPA budget label and I've mentioned before that this label really punches above its weight so this is the this is the stereo copy I've got and um, I think for the princely sum of £12 including postage I gave this a go um, and it sounds wonderful as well. So later on I'm going to tell you about both of these versions. If you think about the personnel involved in the recording and production of this record you just cannot think of a weak link. So to start off with, Alfredo Campoli was an incredibly accomplished violinist whose solo career was hampered by the 1930s financial crash. He had made a start on being a soloist, but the financial necessities meant that he changed his plans and he worked more with smaller salon orchestras and even a small combo that played in fancy London restaurants. And he got a lot of gigs, a lot of experience, but I think it did hamper the mystique that's sometimes necessary for a star soloist. He had been under contract with Decca for quite a while, and initially the 78 format did focus in on his salon work, the lighter classical works. He even recorded for HMV Teddy Bear's Picnic, which actually is a bit of a good tune, but uh, not really deep. But Decker did have faith with him when the LP format arrived, and he did record some very impressive violin concertos in mono in the early days. But in 1956, his stereo career started. I think with the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, he seemed on this date to be very fired up and to prove a point. And supporting him was Atelfo Agenta, who also seems to be very up for this recording. It was his first opportunity to record with the London Symphony Orchestra, and they were definitely on form during this period. If we now look at the Decca personnel involved with this recording, to start off on production, you've got James Walker, who at this early stage was definitely the most experienced and qualified producer of stereo recordings from his work from 1954 in Geneva, mainly with Ansame. Stereo recording had been going on at Kingsway sporadically for about 12 months before this session. And it was initially the Geneva engineers, Wallace and Brown, who did the first recordings. But by this point in time, there was a fairly established approach of Ken Wilkinson doing the mono recordings and supporting various engineers to learn the ropes with using stereo. And during this period of several months, the engineer in question 
was Gordon Parry. And Gordon Parry, right from the start, produced some great stereo recordings. And I think one of the reasons why was he'd been observing his stereo counterparts, especially Jimmy Brown in Vienna, and was far from a novice in stereo. Campoli's style was described as bel canto, and sometimes this style is criticised for focusing too much on technique and beauty of sound, sometimes sacrificing passion and depth. There certainly is in Campoli's performance a real fire that becomes very evident on the final movement, which lets loose some absolute fireworks during the cadenzas. And another really positive feature is the perfect balance and complementary fire in the performance of the London Symphony Orchestra. Some reviews of this piece, particularly the third movement, do identify a Latin feel to the style and the partnership between Campoli and Argenta. Campoli was hoping to reinvigorate his solo recording and performance career. It did have an impact, but he never really achieved the heights of his contemporaries. Looking at the mono recording first, you can't think of a better engineer than Ken Wilkinson to set up the microphones for the mono recording. And the sound of this is exceptional. One of the real strengths of this recording is the quality of the cadenzas, as Ken Wilkinson had more free reign as far as choice of microphones for the recording, compared with stereo, which I'll talk about in a moment. So the cadenzas are particularly fine. There is also good, solid recording of the, of the LSO as well. The format of this particular LP release is another reason why this is such a strong Decca recording, as there is no attempt to squeeze in a filler track, which often would occur to try to tempt people into buying these records. So on the stereo mono versions, the first movement covers the whole of side one, and side two has the other two movements. This is especially helpful for the early SXL release and probably partly explains why it, why it is so sought after in that these early pressing with the early stereo cutting heads squeezing too much onto these discs could very much highlight difficulties near the end of each side and certainly my mono version just sounds glorious. There's no sense at any point of the music sounding strained due to disc limitations. Moving on to this stereo re-release, I've got to admit, although I was aware of this recording, for several years I was content and happy just to have the mono copy. I had assumed that because of the inclusion of an extra track, that the quality of the sound would be impaired. What I hadn't really considered at the time was the associated improvement in cutting head technology at this point in time. And when I actually sat down and listened to this recording, I was really quite stunned and impressed. Michael Gray has documented the evolution of the Decca tree at Kingsway Hall, as well as the other venues. And at this particular point in time in Kingsway, the tree had reached its second incarnation with the replacement of the M49 directional microphones first utilised in the original sessions in Geneva, to the more sweeter sounding KM56 microphones. And the KM56 microphones seemed to suit Kingsway Hall really well, and, would have been, and there would have been a few spare inputs with the early mixers to record Campoli. With this being so early on, the later e evolution by Ken Wilkinson of adding outrigger microphones hadn't yet been used, but the sound had improved at Kingsway Hall to the point where you could get some really lovely sounding stereo. The mastering engineer for the SPA recording is George Bettis, who, if, who you may recall from my Smetna video, and it sounds great. And, uh, and an additional treat is the extra Paganini recording, which was also recorded by Gordon Parry a few months earlier. 
and it sounds lovely. And in the final spectacular cadenza, right at the end of the record, it's so transparent. I'm sure I can make out the famous Kingsway underground train passing by in clearer detail than any other recording, probably because they, at later points, they introduced technology to get rid of that Kingsway rumble. I think the main reason though that I love this recording is it's just so much fun. It is a really great entertainment, perfect sound, and it does sometimes surprise me that it wasn't released more frequently. One possible reason is it has become overshadowed by Espana and the tragic curly loss of Argenta. After such a spectacular career highlight of the winter of 56 going into 57, the end of the following winter, Argenta's body was found in a garage dead from carbon monoxide poisoning. And it may well be his association with Spanish music is the reason why so many repressings have been made of Espana in contrast to the Campoli. In recent years, however, Due to demand in the Far East for legendary, rarer recordings, especially of violinists, the original stereo version has rocketed in value. And I've noticed that since I got hold of my mono copies, that their value is steadily going up, probably due to awareness that with Ken Wilkinson's involvement, this is a very strong mono version. I do think there is the potential that the SPA version, as it gets scarcer, will also increase in value. But at this point in time, especially if you're based in the UK, it is possible to get an absolute stunner and bargain. One of my favourite labels, Analog Phonic, did release a stereo pressing of this recording. But it sold out a long time ago. Some online stores do say that they're awaiting new supplies. I'm not sure whether any further copies will become available. But more recently, and this is still available, Analog Phonic have released an, an LP version combining the contents of two original 10-inch recordings of small pieces by Campoli with piano accompaniment. Although it's called encores, I think it's more that they wanted to get away from his, his salon image, but this is probably the repertoire from his salon days, and it's superbly played. It's in mono, but for 1954, this repressing is absolutely awesome, to the point that I did wonder whether there could be some digital involvement. But the dead wax on this EBS produced pressing makes clear that this is a pure analog re-recording. So this is something that you might want to get hold of, but give some thought to the SPA version because it really sounds great. So I think I've covered all the reasons why I love this Kraken Concerto. And if you do get the chance to get, get a copy of this, go for it because it is tricky to get hold of but it is absolute stunner and one to keep an eye out for so i think next time will be another relatively short video it could be the original source metna marv last it depends uh, whether i'm in the mood or not to to face that now take care bye